Hey everyone, so in today's video, we're gonna see, can we get this generator to start? It doesn't look like the oldest thing, it maybe I don't think it's any more than 20 years old, but I just picked this up at an estate sale. The asking price was $100. I pulled this thing probably a couple hundred times. It popped a few times, it has good compression. I'm confident I can get it going. The lady selling it said every pull the price slightly goes down. So I was able to get it for 70 bucks and she threw in a whole other pile of stuff I had for free. So today what we're going to do is before we give this thing any more pulls, we're going to head off to the gas station and we're going to get 91 octane ethanol free. You should always use ethanol free in lawnmowers, small tractors, all that kind of yard equipment, chainsaws, because ethanol will destroy them. So here's the switch to shut it off. You put this on to pull it. I already looked at the filter. It looks really clean. We're going to try starting fluid. If all else fails, we're going to give the carburetor here a cleaning. I try to start in every position. It only popped a few times. The oil level looks good, but we're going to pull this plug and we're going to give it an oil change because I want to get this thing ready to go just in case there's a power outage. I want this thing to be able to run during a heat wave for the air conditioning. It's been very hot out lately. It's, today is supposed to be in the 90s again. Uh, the shade will probably be gone by the time I get back to work on it. This thing has a pretty good gas tank. It looks like it can maybe hold five gallons in here. It has a few gallons in there now, so I'm gonna disconnect the gas line, let it bleed out into a pan, and I'll dispose of that. I wanna put new fuel in here. And I was also messing with, up top right here, there's a little valve, and if it's all the way out, still didn't start. A little bit in, doesn't want to start. There may actually be a clog because there is probably a little filter here up inside the gas tank. I gave it, gave it a whiff, it smells all right. I open it up right here. See, it's cracking a little bit. There was a little bunch of little pieces of rubber all around here. So at some point that's gonna need to be replaced. Not a big deal at the moment. And it came with this cord here, which I'm assuming was maybe used for an RV. That's what I'm thinking. I'm going to remove this end, and I'm going to put a female normal plug on. Oh, this is actually a 20 amper, so I'm actually going to replace both ends because I don't really need that for anything. So I'm going to put a 15 amp male and a 15 amp female, and that'll be good for running any household just items in the house. And... If there's a power outage in the winter time, I'm going to need to run the furnace. My furnace is not the newest, but it's 22 years old. It's new enough to have a technician service plug on it that runs on the same breaker. That will allow me to back feed through that plug. All I got to do for safety reasons is shut the breaker off. I'm going to put two male ends, which is called a suicide cord. You can't buy those. That will allow the generator to pump power in, and it will pump it backwards into the electrical plug so the furnace can use it. Yep, that, that will work because the furnace has a, it's a diesel furnace, so it has a fuel pump that sprays the fuel into the burner very finely, and it also has a blower fan because it's forced air. That will allow my diesel furnace to run in the wintertime. I've been looking for a generator for years, but didn't want to pay the cost. A machine like this would probably be $1,200, maybe a little bit less these days. Looks good. Gonna give this a good dusting. So it has two 15 amp plugs right here, normal household ones. Here's the two little breaker resets. Not sure what's in here, possibly fuses. I don't have big fingernails. I usually cut them off before they get ripped off. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what that is. If anyone can tell me exactly what that is, I'd like to know. So this thing is not powerful enough to have like a 30 amp plug or anything, but that's not needed. I just need to run a 15 amp furnace. And right here are the 20 ampers. So does it say when this thing was manufactured or anything? I'm sure on the unit somewhere I'll be able to find it. All right, let's head off to the store. I got a couple gasoline cans. This thing has garbage fuel in it. I don't trust fuel that I picked up at an estate sale. So eventually I'll, I'll use this here for starting burn fires or making fire nados. But I have another gas can. I'm going to go to the store now and get some 
ethanol free and starting fluid. All right, everyone. So the first thing I'm going to do here is put this pan down. I'm going to disconnect the gas line here so I can drain everything out of it. In the meantime, I'm going to start cleaning the whole machine, getting all the dust off it. I did buy starter fluid and high octane gas ethanol free. This is really on here. Probably hasn't been off in a while. Here we go. I'm on off. Here we go. Now it's time to open the little valve. And we're going to let that drip out. In the meantime, I'm going to start doing some washing. So everyone, this generator came with this little cart that it is on. When I pulled it out of this person's basement, I had to drag it because one of the wheels here is completely seized. We're going to see by the end of this video if we can free this up. Put a bunch of WD-40 on that. I can't get this one to move at all. The other ones are pretty good. Spray some oil on them. Keep them going good. Once we free that up, I'll put some good oil on it that won't evaporate like this stuff. All right, everyone, it's time to see if we can get this thing going. I'm going to pour an entire gallon of good fuel into it. That's 91 octane, ethanol free. Did you see that old gasoline? It was like a brownish yellow. I don't think this thing has started in years. I think it's just garbage fuel. And if I get it going, that's a good thing because it saved me 30 bucks. I'm now turning the valve back on. This thing sitting in the sun is building a lot of pressure. This black tank is creating a lot of pressure with the heat conducting on it. The little vent on the gas pipe, I can hear it constantly hissing. All right, we're going to try giving this thing a few pulls. It does not have a primer, and if it doesn't start, we'll use some starting fluid. I got really good hopes for this. We're going to start with the choke all the way open, and we'll try from there. All right, time for the starting fluid. Here we go. Spray it directly in there. Try adjusting that a little bit. Nope, all the way. All right, I'm gonna remove the spark plug now. We're gonna give that a cleaning. Almost, I guess it may have been the spark plug. I just cleaned it and it almost started. Choke is fully on, let's get it off of that because it tried to start. A little bit more starting fluid. Let's hope it stays going. Almost. So I just took apart the carburetor, the screw on the bottom there, it just holds on the bowl and there's a little bit of varnish inside it. Now right here, the float, there's a small little bar here. When the bowl is removed, 
this will be exposed but when the bowl's in here it'll stop this bar from moving you can push it out i'm probably going to need a screwdriver or a little pair of needle nose to pull this out it'll allow this to come free for i can scrub it off and then i'll do a little bit more cleaning in there All right, so I'm just going to spray it with carburetor cleaner. I'm going to use this little steel brush, or this is a brass brush. Be very gentle in there. Get all that off. Then I'm going to clean it off in gasoline. Just had to put some sunscreen on. It's getting so hot out. I think I did a pretty good job right here. Um, I just reattached this part. I didn't go any further. I did not take apart anything like the cup. If it still doesn't start, I might go a little further, but I got that cleaned up pretty well. Now, this stuff is amazing. I could be in here with the steel brush scrubbing away. Not much is happening unless you have a little, you want some of this in there while you're scrubbing. Just spraying this, just spraying directly onto it was doing a better job than scrubbing real hard. This is awesome. Most of the stuff I get free at people's garage sales because usually this kind of chemicals, oils, gasolines, paint, that kind of stuff isn't a nuisance to get rid of. People like me are awesome when they show up to dispose of people's junk. My camera's already overheated five times sitting in the sun. All right, it just started for a brief 10 seconds. Now it's time to take, take it off the choke. All right, that's a good sign. Try it again. Let's get some more of that starting fluid on there. If it keeps going, we can put the filter back on. <sighs> All right, maybe the carburetor is going to need a few more adjustments.
Not bad at all. It's working for now. I still can tell it needs a few more adjustments. All right, I've come to the conclusion that this thing was just absolutely filthy and all its adjustments were off. So, I still it still needs a slight tweak on there, but the main issue was the the tension on on the governor arm. I was messing with that and that seems to be overall what the problem was. And based on the fuel that was in this, it would have never ran with the fuel it came with. So no matter how much I tried at that place, I don't think I ever would have got this thing started. The fuel that came out of it was a brownish tint. It's definitely not as flammable. I'd say the fuel in this was at least five years old or so. Yeah, fuel's not supposed to be dark brown. So I had to flush out the lines. You saw I took apart the carburetor and it runs now pretty nicely. Definitely worth the money. It puts out power. It'll definitely be able to be ran in an emergency now. So now the last thing to do is change the oil so it's ready to go. Alright, so here's how I'm going to change the oil. I've balanced the generator on top of this bookshelf. I have a bottle right here to collect the fuel in or the oil in. It's going to be pretty hot since the machine's only been off for about 10 minutes. We can let this drip out for a while. Now nah, we're definitely going to need a wrench that's very tight and I don't want to strip it. Alright. Here we go, we cracked it. Slowly coming along. Plug's not that hot, but the oil's probably going to be scalding hot because I let this thing run for about a half an hour and I noticed the more it ran, the smoother it got. Here we go. This is going to be very... Yeah, I can feel it. Come on. I'm going to turn it the rest with this so I don't drop it and get burned. Here we go. It's going right down into the bottle. We can let that drip for a bit. Oh, I'm spilling a little bit of it. Gotta move the machine a little bit. Here we go. Now there's no way for sure to know the last time this was changed because motor oil turns black sometimes even after the first use of it. Now that's starting to drip a little bit and get on the ground, I'm going to tilt the whole machine. Now I'm going to hold the machine here at this tilt for only a couple minutes. Then I'm going to fill it back up. It recommends on here to use 30 weight, starting off from 5 weight when it's cold. Not too tight. We don't want to crack anything. I'm just going to turn it a little bit with the wrench. A little tiny bit more. And I think that's pretty good. Alright, it's time to fill it back up. So this generator does not say anywhere on it how much oil it needs, and I looked it up online, I can't find this model of generator because it is older, so we're going to have to play a little game here. We're going to start off with some oil, and once I get half of this in there, we're going to check a dipstick, see if it needs any more. Is that about half? A little more. Typically a machine like this uses between 400 and 600 so I think it's about time that we try with the dipstick see if it needs anything else Make sure this is 
cleaned off on my shirt and then we can stick it in there I would much rather prefer this kind of dipstick over the metal ones you slide down because the metal ones rub against the walls and it takes a while to get an accurate reading after pouring so I honestly can't tell I didn't wipe that off good enough I want to get this thing completely dried off. I can't tell. Alright, pull it back out. Hard to tell, but it looks like we're at the minimum level for oil so pour a little bit more in now we'll give it another dip all right now i got a very accurate reading right here we're right in the center of it so i'm going to give it a tiny bit more and then we'll be good this thing doesn't have that dirty of an exhaust pipe, so I don't think it's burning any oil. But it does say that every five hours, it recommends checking the oil level. Because as the machine ages, it may start burning oil. So, it looks like I got a good little machine here. Definitely worth the money. The machine doesn't look like it's in that much, it doesn't look like it's in very bad shape. It just looks like it wasn't taken care of. Because I've encountered so many people in my life that they give me their machine to look at and I get it usually working pretty quickly. Because just cleaning a carburetor every year or if you don't use the machine often, every certain amount of time after run hours or give it a oil change every year. Or if you're someone with a tiny little property, give your equipment an oil change every other year. It'll go a long ways. Like, when I was a kid, my mother would go 10 years without changing the oil in the lawnmower and wonder why it breaks. When all the my equipment here is, most of it's from the 80s, except for my push mower. It's all old machines, and they're easy to work on back then. Hope this video was interesting everyone. Thanks for watching. Let's see how this machine likes the brand new oil. Now this machine I may not use again for years and I'm definitely going to operate it occasionally to make sure it's running but because it's probably going to go sit now somewhere for another six months before I start it back up, always use fuel stabilizer so it doesn't go bad like that guy's fuel did.